बाकी स्टूडेंट्स के भी लोग फटाफट ज्वाइन करेंगे So in last two classes we have studied about the hydrostatic equilibrium and its application in the u-tube manometer. So what is the hydrostatic equilibrium? Basically, hydrostatic equilibrium represent the uh, uh, can be used to calculate the pressure inside a stationary fluid. The equation of hydrostatic equilibrium is if fluid is uh, no, fluid is uh, incompressible, then Pa divided by rho minus Pb divided by rho equal to G. Z A minus Z B. So this equation basically tells you suppose you have a stationary fluid. So the density of fluid is rho. This is the incompressible fluid. Means density will not change with pressure. Okay, this is the incompressible fluid, and the density of fluid is rho. So you can measure the difference in pressure with elevation. Okay, suppose this is the point A, this is the point B. So, how much pressure difference occurs between these two points? That you can calculate from this equation. Okay, so that is equal to P A minus P B equal to rho G Z A minus Z B. That is the pressure with difference between these two points. Okay, so this is the hydrostatic equilibrium for incompressible fluid. Okay, now for compressible fluids. Suppose you are assuming that the ideal gas law is applicable the, for compressible fluid. If ideal gas law is applicable, and for the general application, we assume that ideal gas law is applicable because the results does not have very high errors. Okay, if ideal gas law. Is applicable. Then you have the equation Pb by Pa that is equal to exponential of in bracket Gm 
डिवाइड बाय आर टी जेड ए माइनस जेड बी ओके ये माइनस साइन विल कम ओके सो एम इज द मोलिकुलर वेट ऑफ द फ्लूड ओके ए एंड बी आर द सेम दे आर टू पॉइंट एट द डिफरेंट एलिवेशन सो यू कैन कैलकुलेट द प्रेशर ड्रॉप बिटवीन दीज टू पॉइंट बाय यूजिंग दिस इक्वेशन दिस इक्वेशन इज कॉल्ड द बेरोमेट्रिक इक्वेशन Okay, so this equation is uh, widely used to calculate the pressure drop in atmosphere. Okay, suppose you want to calculate, uh, suppose a plane is uh, flying up uh, at uh, uh, one twelve uh, thousand meter uh, meter high height. Okay, so the elevation of plane is twelve thousand meter. So what is the pressure at that point? You want to calculate. So you can easily calculate because. the pressure at the at, um, ground level you know that is the one atmosphere you can use this equation what is the average molecular weight of air that you can calculate you know because uh, air contains the uh, 79% nitrogen and 21% oxygen so you can calculate the average molecular weight of air you know the atmospheric temperature temperature you can assume at uh, constant although the temperature is not constant you know that is changing with elevation suppose Suppose temperature is constant, you can assume temperature is constant. Then you can easily calculate P A minus P. Uh, you can calculate what is the uh, pressure at the twelve thousand meter elevation. Yeah, that you can easily calculate. Okay. Even if the temperature is variable, then you can assume temperature uh, the variable temperature, and then it can also be calculated. Okay. So the original equation is suppose the temperature is variable. Then how can you calculate? The original equation was dP by P equal plus G M by R T D Z equal to zero. So if temperature changes with height, if you assume that temperature is changing with height, then T becomes the function of height, and now that you can determine, you know, from the weather uh, uh, weather of this data. See how the temperature is changing with time. Suppose temperature is changing with time according to this equation, A Z plus B. And a linear generally temperature reduces linearly with the height minus A Z plus B. Okay, so you know the temperature difference, temperature drop with elevation. Then you can just substitute this value here and integrate the equation. You will get how to uh, how the uh, Uh, pressure changes with increasing the with uh, uh, when you uh, with the higher elevations uh, that you can calculate. Okay, now hydrostatic uh, equilibrium is also possible in the centrifugal field. So when when the centrifugal field is applied, then the pressure drop in the centrifugal field can be calculated by P two minus P one. That is the pressure drop due to the centrifugal field, omega square rho r two square minus r one square divided by two. So this is the equation. The most of the uh, centrifuge centrifuge are the equipment used to separate it out the two immiscible fluids, and a very quickly, and a. So if you have a two immiscible fluid and you want to separate out that fluid very quickly, you can use the centrifuge. So the centrifuge works on this principle, and then you can determine the pressure drop. And based on the pressure drop, you can determine where you have to put the inlet and outlet pipelines in the centrifuge. Okay. So basically, R1, R2 are the suppose this is a uh, centrifuge which is rotating with omega velocity. Okay. so basically if this centrifuge this vessel is filled with the fluid so how much pressure suppose this is the at same elevation you have the two points this is the point 2 this is point 1 so how much pressure drop occurs between the point 1 and point 2 why the pressure drop will occur because the velocity the centrifugal force will depend upon the how much distance you have from the central axis and that that will affect the centrifugal force okay 
so you can determine how what is the pressure and it will always uh, uh, work in the tangential in the outside tangential direction okay so you will find what is the pressure drop due to this centrifugal force between point 1 and point 2 by using this equation okay so this is the the pressure drop due to the due to the centrifugal force okay now the third point which we have studied is the manometer so manometers are the equipments which can be used to uh, measure the pressure drop between the two points okay so generally we use the youtube manometer there are different designs of manometer but the most common is the youtube manometer okay so youtube manometer has the youtube type geometry this is point 1 this is point 2 okay so in manometer generally you have the two different fluids okay so so suppose manometer the barometric fluid is represented by the blue line so this is the one type of fluid which is filled inside the manometer that is called the barometric fluid okay the second fluid is about this point so here you have the another fluid so what are the requirements for the manometer i have already told you at the morning class that <coughs> first point both fluid should be immiscible hai na the barometric fluid should not be miscible with the fluid above inside the flowing channel hai na generally manometers are used to calculate the pressure drop inside a flowing channel so barometric fluid should not be mixed um, should not be miscible in the flow uh, fluid present in the uh, in the flowing channel second point the barometric the density of barometric fluid should be higher than the density of the fluid present in the flowing channel okay so suppose the density of this fluid is rho b this is the fluid b the density of this fluid is rho b this is fluid a this is the barometric fluid it is represented by a the density of this fluid is rho a okay now this height is here to here this height is suppose this height can be divided in two parts this is one this is second part from here to so here you have the height z m here to here you have the height r m okay now what you here you have the pressure p1 here you have the pressure p2 so you have to determine p1 minus p2 so because fluid is not moving hai na in youtube manometer fluid is always present in stationary condition you know if fluid is moving that means there is a pressure difference now here you have the two different pressure although the pressure is different between point 1 and point 2 but 
inside this tube fluid is not moving why fluid is not moving because of, because of the hydrostatic equilibrium so there is the hydrostatic equilibrium inside the tube so how the hydrostatic equilibrium is maintained due to the level difference of the barometric fluid so basically what i am telling that the pressure applied at this point plus the pressure generated due to this fluid column है ना यहां से यहां तक जो आपका फ्लूड कॉलम है द प्रेशर जनरेटेड बाय द वेट ऑफ दिस फ्लूड कॉलम सो पी वन प्लस द प्रेशर फोर्स प्रेशर फोर्स जनरेटेड बाय दिस फ्लूड कॉलम दैट इज कॉल्ड द पी वन डैश दैट शुड बी इक्वल टू द प्रेशर एट दिस पॉइंट पी टू प्लस प्रेशर जनरेटेड बाय दिस फ्लूड कॉलम ओके बोथ आर इक्वल दैट इज P2 dash. That is P2 dash is the pressure generated by this fluid column. Then only fluid will remain in stationary condition. At this point, at this point, the pressure from this direction, pressure from this direction should be equal. Then only fluid will not move. Otherwise, fluid otherwise fluid starts to move in one direction. Na based on the pressure difference. Okay, because the pressure is equal at this point, that's why fluid is not moving. now you can see that from here to here you have the same fluid hai na at this level in the both tubes you have the same fluid so below this the pressure cannot be changed hai na jitna yahan pressure generate karega ye fluid utna pressure regenerate karega so at this point suppose this is the point number 2 uh, point number 3 so at point number 3 pressure should be equal at the both tubes why because you have the same fluid at uh, at below from the from the any yani below of this point hai na here also you have the barometric fluid here also you have the barometric fluid so the pressure should be pressure generated by the barometric fluid in the both tube should be same okay so you have the same pressure uh, so the pressure at the point 3 should be equal in the both tubes okay so what you have to do instead of doing the pressure balance from the bottom of the youtube you can do the pressure balance at point 3 samajh mein aaya so at point 3 you have to do the pressure balance why because uh, uh, here you have the same fluid in the both tubes okay so the pressure generated if the you have the same fluid in the both tubes then the the amount of fluid the height of fluid is also same so same force generate karenge है ना वो सेम फोर्स जनरेट करेंगे तो आपको अलग अलग फोर्स कैलकुलेट करने की जरूरत नहीं है बिकॉज दिस कॉलम एंड दिस कॉलम विल जनरेट द सेम फोर्स ओके सो दिस एट दिस पॉइंट प्रेशर द प्रेशर शुड बी इक्वल सो यू हैव टू कैलकुलेट द प्रेशर फोर्स फ्रॉम अबाउ दिस अबाउ द पॉइंट थ्री ओनली ओके नो वी विल स्टार्ट सो फर्स्ट पॉइंट इज पी वन पी वन प्लस दिस हाइट इज जेड वन प्लस जेड एम प्लस आर एम so you have to write zm plus rm so <coughs> basically we are using the hydrostatic equilibrium equation so pa minus pb equal to pa minus pb equal to g multiplied by rho multiplied by difference in height okay so difference is height is zm plus rm multiplied by rho rho is rho b because the green fluid has the density b multiply by the gravity constant z so that is the amount of force at this point pressure force hydrostatic pressure force at this point that should be equal to the force at the other point uh, other tube so that should be equal to p2 plus this height multiply by rho b zm multiply by rho b multiply by g plus here you have the blue fluid so here you have the rm multiply by rho a multiply by g okay so now you have to just balance the equation so when you open this bracket you will get p1 plus zm rho b g plus rm rho b g equal to p2 plus zm 
रो बी जी प्लस आर एम रो ए जी सो दिस टू क्वांटिटीज विल बी कैंसिल्ड आउट बिकॉज बोथ आर सेम सो नो इफ यू आर कैलकुलेटिंग पी वन माइनस पी टू दैट शुड बी इक्वल टू If you take this quantity at the other side of the uh, equation, it will become R M will be common, G will be common. You will get row A minus row B. So this is the parameter. This is the basic equation of YouTube manometer. The most simplest type of uh, manometer used in industry and most useful manometer is the YouTube manometer. In YouTube manometer. the pressure difference can be calculated simply by the difference in the level of barometric fluid rm is the difference in the level of barometric fluid here you have the barometric fluid like in the morning i have i have uh, shown you the video in the video you have seen that they are measuring the difference in the level of mercury so in the morning experiment that the basic barometric fluid is the mercury so difference in the level of the mercury is rm है ना तो यू नो द व्हाट इज द हाइट एट दिस पॉइंट व्हाट इज द हाइट एट दिस पॉइंट यू कैन टेक द डिफरेंस दैट इज द आर एम मल्टीप्लाई बाय द ग्रेविटी कांस्टेंट एंड मल्टीप्लाई बाय द डिफरेंस इन द डेंसिटी ऑफ टू फ्लूइड्स सो द मरकरी डेंसिटी ऑफ मरकरी यू नो दैट द 13600 kg पर मीटर स्क्वायर द डेंसिटी ऑफ वाटर इज 1000 kg पर मीटर स्क्वायर सो मीटर क्यूब so the, when you take the difference it will become the 12600 kg per meter cube multiplied by rm whatever the value of rm difference between the height multiplied by the 9.8 you will get the pressure in pascal second okay so this is how you can calculate the pressure difference between two points by using the youtube manometer okay now youtube manometer may have the other geometries also okay so the next type of geometry is that is the inclined manometer excuse me sir tumhari awaaz ke liye nahi hai fir se bolo hello ha ha bolo hamre टू डिफरेंट फ्लूड है ना अगर यहाँ पर प्रेशर पी वन है यहाँ प्रेशर पी टू है ओके okay, तो क्या होगा इफ पी वन इज ग्रेटर देन पी टू सपोज यू हैव सपोज यू हैव ओनली द वाटर इनसाइड द ट्यूब सब एक कंडीशन लेते हैं हम इंक्लाइन पढ़ने से पहले सपोज इन यू ट्यूब यू हैव ओनली द वाटर सपोज दिस YouTube is filled only with water, है ना इसमें खाली वाटर भरा हुआ है Here you have the pressure P1, here you have the pressure P2, and P1 is greater than P2. पी टू तो क्या होगा बिकॉज यू हैव द प्रेशर डिफरेंस फ्लूड स्टार्ट टू मूव फ्रॉम दिस पॉइंट टू दिस पॉइंट है ना अगर सेम फ्लूड है तो ये मूव करने लगेगा बिकॉज ड्यू टू द प्रेशर डिफरेंस यू हैव द मोशन है ना लेकिन That will be possible when each point, है ना तो now you can divide the tube. अब इस tube को divide करो यहां पर आपका pressure क्या है P1 वन है यहां पर आपका प्रेशर पी टू है नो यू कैन डिवाइड द ट्यूब इन द सेवरल स्मॉल पॉइंट सेवरल स्मॉल सेक्टर्स ओके नो वाट विल हैपन फ्लूड इज मूविंग फ्रॉम दिस पॉइंट टू दिस पॉइंट Fluid is moving from point one. Suppose this is point three, this is point four, this is point five, this is point six, this is point seven, this is point eight, this is point nine, this is point ten, this is point eleven. 
okay so fluid is moving from point 1 to point 3 point 3 to point 4 point 4 to point 5 point 5 to point 5 to point 6 point 6 to 7 8 9 10 okay that means if pressure is one point is p1 here pressure is p2 here pressure is p3 here pressure is p4 here pressure is p5 that means p1 is greater than p2 uh, p1 is greater than here the pressure is p3 p4 p5 so p1 is greater than p3 p4 is greater than p5 hai na har point pe pressure yahan par pressure yahan se jata hai yahan pressure yahan se jata hai which each point you have the pressure difference then only fluid is moving uh, inside the tube if the pressure is equal in between two points that means you have no flow okay ab hoga kya suppose you are taking the two different fluids hai na sabse pehle aapne वाटर लिया और वाटर के नीचे नाउ यू आर टेकिंग द मरकरी विच हैज द हायर डेंसिटी ओके नाउ यू आर टेकिंग द टू डिफरेंट फ्लूड्स हियर यू हैव द हियर यू हैव वाटर हियर यू हैव मरकरी ओके एच जी सो वाटर को फ्लो करने के लिए आपको कम फोर्स लगाना पड़ेगा वाई बिकॉज टू फ्लो द वाटर यू नीड द लेस फोर्स बिकॉज द डेंसिटी ऑफ वाटर इज लेस है ना अगर किसी चीज का वेट करने सपोज इफ यू एनोलॉजी टेक द एनोलॉजी बिटवीन द बिटवीन द सॉलिड बॉडी मैकेनिक्स एंड फ्लूड मैकेनिक्स है ना अगर कोई सॉलिड बॉडी है उसका वेट कम है उसकी डेंसिटी कम है है ना तो डेंसिटी कम है तो उसको आपको मूव करने के लिए कम फोर्स लगाना पड़ेगा अगर उसका वेट बढ़ जाएगा तो उसे मूव करने के लिए ज्यादा फोर्स लगाना पड़ेगा तो सेम थिंग इज एप्लीकेबल हियर ओके बिकॉज नाउ यू हैव द हाई डेंसिटी मरकरी सो यू नीड द मोर फोर्स तो होता क्या है कि दो पॉइंट के बीच में मरकरी ने मूव करना शुरू किया ऊपर के डायरेक्शन में है ना यहाँ प्रेशर पी था यहाँ प्रेशर पी था तो जब because of p1 is greater than p2 mercury ne upar move karna shuru kiya but after some length it will become constant why because the difference between the p1 and p2 is equal to the this height and the weight hai na usko move karne ke liye jitna usko chahiye tha jitna pressure chahiye tha wo pressure aap generate nahi kar pa rahe because this is acha ek aur cheez hai यूट्यूब मेनोमीटर इज ऑलवेज इन दर्टिकल डायरेक्शन ओके सो द फॉर द फ्लोइंग द फ्लूड फ्रॉम वन पॉइंट टू दर पॉइंट है ना यहां से यहां तक अगर आपको फ्लूड फ्लो करना है तो उसके बीच में जो डेल्टा पी प्रेशर ड्रॉप होगा डेट शुड बी ग्रेटर देन द वेट ऑफ द फ्लूड प्रेजेंट इन द टू ट्यूब्स है ना डेट शुड बी ग्रेटर देन द वेट ऑफ द फ्लूड प्रेजेंट इन द टू ट्यूब यहां से फ्लूड को यहां तक जो वेट चाहिए यहां से यहां तक मूव करने के लिए बिकॉज दिस आर द वर्टिकल ट्यूब सो द प्रेशर डिफरेंस शुड बी ग्रेटर देन द ग्रेविटी ओके तो अब यहां पर क्या हो रहा है कि जो ये वेट है फ्लूड का दैट इज ग्रेटर देन दैट इज इक्वल टू दिस प्रेशर डिफरेंस है ना तो दैट विल बिकम रो एच जी माइनस रो डब्ल्यू डेंसिटी ऑफ मरकरी माइनस डेंसिटी ऑफ वाटर मल्टीप्लाई बाय दिस हाइट दिस हाइट इज आर एम मल्टीप्लाई बाय ग्रेविटी समझ में आया है ना बेसिकली बिकॉज आपके जो वर्टिकल ट्यूब है तो फ्लूड को ऊपर की तरफ मूव करने के लिए आपको जो उसका वेट फोर्स वेट का जो फोर्स है है ना उसे ओवरकम करना पड़ेगा और आपने क्या किया एक हैवी फ्लूड इसके अंदर फिल कर दिया है तो वो हैवी जो फ्लूड है जिसकी डेंसिटी ज्यादा है सिग्निफिकेंटली हायर है उसको आप इजिली मूव नहीं कर पा रहे हो है ना ड्यू टू द प्रेशर डिफरेंस ओके दिस दैट्स वाई इट इज प्रेजेंट इन द स्टेशनरी कंडीशन ओके और डाउट था अगर हम सेकेंड वाली जो ट्यूब है जिसमें पी टू है उसमें मरकरी हम ले ही ना 
इक्विब्रियम तो तब भी आएगा ना मतलब एक पॉइंट पे आपके वाटर रुक जाएगा तब भी तब भी ये कंडीशन आ सकती है सपोज जो p2 p1 p2 p1 इज वेरी वेरी लेस है ना p2 p1 इज वेरी वेरी स्मॉल तो भी एक कंडीशन आ सकती है क्योंकि अगर इस कंडीशन में भी अगर ये आपका बनता है कि प्रेशर ड्रॉप जो है वो लेसर देन वेट है वेट ऑफ द फ्लूड प्रेजेंट इन द ट्यूब है देन इट विल रिमेन इन द स्टेशनरी कंडीशन बट यू कैन नॉट यूज दैट फॉर द मेजरमेंट क्यों क्योंकि आपका कितना कितना वेट कितना वो डिफरेंस uh, 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 आ रहा है लेवल में है ना वो आप मेजर नहीं कर सकते आप उसमें क्या करना पड़ेगा आपको वो पॉइंट खोजना पड़ेगा जिस पॉइंट पे फ्लूड मूव करना स्टार्ट करे है ना उसमें क्या करना होगा सपोज यू हैव ए ट्यूब दिस इज ए ट्यूब विच इज फिल्ड विद द वाटर ओके इनिशियली हियर प्रेशर इज पी वन हियर प्रेशर इज पी टू ओके आपको प्रेशर डिफरेंस मालूम है तो आपको अगर प्रेशर डिफरेंस कांस्टेंट है P1 एंड P2 के बीच में प्रेशर डिफरेंस कांस्टेंट है तो फिर क्या होगा आइदर इस यूट्यूब के अंदर फ्लूड जो है फ्लो करेगा और फ्लूड फ्लो नहीं करेगा है ना इफ P1 वन माइनस पी टू इज लेस देन वेट डब्ल्यू टी वेट ऑफ द फ्लूड प्रेजेंट इन द ट्यूब देन देर इज ए वेलोसिटी विल बी जीरो है ना स्टेशनरी कंडीशन आ जाएगी इफ पी वन माइनस पी टू इज इक्वल टू वेट देन वेलोसिटी विल यानी फ्लूड विल स्टार्ट टू मूव है ना दैट विल स्टार्ट टू मूव इफ पी वन माइनस पी टू इज ग्रेटर देन जीरो ग्रेटर देन द वेट ऑफ द फ्लूड देन You will have the positive velocity. Okay, so slip is condition. May you can measure the measure the pressure drop. And now when you have the P one minus P two equal to weight of the fluid, then only you can measure. And that is not possible because you have only single tube. You cannot change the height of the tube. इसके लिए आपको ऐसी tube चाहिए जिसकी height आप adjust कर सको, so that you can change the weight and you can get a weight. Which is equal to the pressure drop, and right? which is not possible, and right? because you have only one glass tube, and it is very difficult to observe the fluid flow, and right? suppose you have transparent fluid like water, so water move कर रहा है, and right? from outside the tube, from a glass tube, you cannot easily identify that water is moving or it is present in the stationary condition. But if you have the mercury and water to different fluid. You can easily identify that it is moving or it is not moving because you easily you can easily see the interface of the mercury water level, है ना? You can easily see the interface of mercury water, है ना? कि यहाँ पर mercury जो होता है that is present in the silver color and water is transparent. So you can easily see the difference, है ना? So it is the easiest way to identify to calculate the pressure drop between the two points, है ना? Although the stationary condition may present when you have the The single fluid, but that cannot be used as a manometer, है ना? Basic why we are done, uh, studying the design because this design is used to measure the pressure drop between two power points. Okay. Yes. Yes. Stationary में ही सारा apply होगा बस main. हाँ हाँ. It will have. हाँ. Basically, आप जब lab में देखोगे तो जो manometer होता है वो stationary. इसके ऊपर एक tube लगी होगी देखो. Suppose this is the pipeline, है ना? Fluid is flowing from this point to this point. Here you have the pressure P1, here you have the pressure P2. Now you to want to measure what is the pressure drop between what is the pressure difference between P1 minus P2, है ना? वो आपको measure करना है. तो कैसे measure करते हैं? Take a manometer. So manometer comes like this type of handy equipment. It contains two tube. Uh, it contains a U tube, which is situated on a solid board. Okay, so a board के ऊपर एक U tube लगी होती है. Here you have the walls. यहाँ पर एक walls लगे होते हैं ऊपर. ठीक है. And this manometer contains the mercury. So it will filled with the mercury. Okay. So what you have to do? 
यू हैव टू टेक ए फ्लेक्सीबल पाइपलाइन एंड अटैच द टू ट्यूब है ना यहाँ पर फ्लेक्सीबल पाइपलाइन ले लो और किनारे से इसे अटैच कर दो यूट्यूब से सो दिस पॉइंट वन इज अटैच फ्रॉम हियर वन पॉइंट ऑफ पॉइंट ऑफ द यूट्यूब एंड पॉइंट टू इज अटैच फ्रॉम द अदर पॉइंट ओके नाउ वंस यू अटैच द पाइपलाइन टू दिस यूट्यूब यू विल फाइंड दैट द मर्करी लेवल विल बी चेंज है ना इट विल सपोज पी वन इज ग्रेटर देन पी टू सो हियर इट विल गोज डाउन एंड द अदर पार्ट इट विल गोज अप ओके नाउ यू हैव टू जस्ट मेजर वट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन द मर्करी लेवल and you can measure the you can determine the pressure drop p1 minus p2 in between these two points okay so yahan par ye stationary condition although it is flowing inside the tube but yahan par ye stationary condition nahi hoga yahan ye flow nahi karega theek hai okay sir <coughs> now there are other types of uh, manometers also so um, uh, the second most common type of manometer is inclined manometers this type of manometer has the slightly different geometries so this is the inclined manometer so suppose here you have the pressure pa or p1 here you have the pressure p2 here you have the two different fluids इसको अलग तरह से दिखाते हैं दिस इज द बेरोमेट्रिक फ्लूड okay and above this you have the fluid which is flowing inside the channel so here you have the another type of fluid which is flowing inside the channel now if you take this level okay so the angle of this inclined tube is alpha and the distance from here to here this distance is rm okay now suppose this distance again if you take this point mm -hmm. 
Suppose this distance is L A and this distance is R M. Okay. And this is R4. Okay, this is L A. You know, this height from here to here, the height is L A and this distance is R M. Okay. So you can measure, you can pay, you can do the pressure balance P1 multiplied by P1 plus the density of this fluid is again rho b and density of the barometric fluid is rho a okay so p1 plus l a difference by the statical equation you can write l a plus r m multiply by because rm is the inclined distance hai na to rm you have to take the sin theta angle sin alpha rm sin alpha alpha is this angle so the you have to calculate the height so it will comes rm sin alpha and multiply by rho b that should be equal to similar to the last case p2 plus l a rho b here g will come hai na rho b g plus rho a g r m sin alpha because this is the inclined rm is the inclined distance so whenever you take the, you want to measure the uh, difference the uh, difference of the pressure between two point so it will only depend upon the vertical position it will not depend upon the side position if you have the two points with uh, uh, of the same elevation then the pressure of uh, that two point should be same hai right? na so that's why only you have the but you have to take the vertical distance this distance and this distance equal to rm sin alpha you know this is the rm sin alpha that's why this formula will come now again this la will cancel out with this la so you will get p1 minus p2 equal to rm g rho a minus rho b multiply by sin alpha so basically what is the benefit of using the inclined manometer suppose your pressure drop is very very low hai na the pressure drop uh, in, inside the channel is very very low, low so p1 minus p2 is very very less so if it is less then the if you are using the u tube manometer then the height will be the difference of level of the barometric fluid will be very very less suppose this is like 3.2 cm this will come 3.3 cm okay so if the difference between the uh, high elevation is very very less in the u tube manometer the accuracy of the machine will reduce you know because you have to take the reading by the visual observations you know in the manometer always you can only take the readings from the visual manometer visual observation so if the level is uh, not very uh, the difference in the level is not good then you cannot measure the pressure difference accurately okay so for that you can use the inclined because when you use the inclined the difference will increase with the reduction of the alpha angle hai na so this rm value will increase because rm sin theta is always less than if alpha is less than 90 then rm sin theta is always less than rm okay so the basic this quantity rm now you have the a scale which is the inclined scale now in the inclined scale you can easily measure the difference rm difference okay that can be easily measured in uh, in comparison to the u tube manometer so suppose if you have the very less very minute pressure drop uh, in the channel then you can use the inclined manometer that is also very famous geometry okay समझ में आया क्लाइंट में नोमीटर
बोलो भाई आया कि नहीं आया समझ में यस सर तो फाइनल इक्वेशन पी वन माइनस पी टू इक्वल टू आर एम जी रो ए माइनस रो बी साइन अल्फा मेन सर ये माइनर चेंजेस के लिए है ना ये वाला नाउ द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक इज कंटिन्यूस दैट इज ऑल्सो द एप्लीकेशन ऑफ द hydrostatic equilibrium that is the continuous decanter design of the continuous decanter gravity decanter so basically continuous gravity decanter is a machine which is used used to separate out the two invisible fluids hai na so this is a type of unit which is present in the big industry if you want to separate out the uh, two invisible fluid which has the different gravity uh, different uh, densities at industrial scale you can use the continuous gravity decanter which works on the principle of the hydrostatic equilibrium okay तो एक ग्रेविटी डिकेंटर इज यूज्ड फॉर कंटिन्यूस सेपरेशन of two immiscible liquids of different densities okay so basically you have a large vessel so that is type of the cylindrical vessel you know you have already studied the cylindrical design of the cylindrical vessels in the previous semester so basically it is a horizontal cylindrical vessel it is like the storage vessel on the horizontal cylindrical storage vessel okay now it has the two points this is a cylindrical vessel now it has a hole here where you are entering the where you can put the feed so feed is entering from this point in a cylindrical vessel okay inside the vessel you have a this feed contains the two fluids hai na a and b it contains the two fluids a and b now this vessel is depressurized by a vent so above the top of the vessel you have the vent so what is the purpose of vents vent to remove any pressure to prevent any pressure build up in the vessel you know when you feed the fluid so the pressure might build up inside the vessel so you want to remove the pressure that's why you put a vent here okay 
Now, because fluid is immiscible and you are feeding the fluid in a very large vessel, so the two layers will be developed inside the vessel. Right? Now, because these are the miscible fluid with the uh, different densities like water and alcohol. Suppose you are feeding the mixture of water and alcohol in a very large tank. So, kya hoga? El water, water and el oil. Hey na, if you are feeding the mixture of water and oil in a very large tank, so kya hoga? Oil will come out, oil will float on the water surface. Hey na, so it will make the two different layers. Okay. Suppose the height of the, uh, the bottom layer or high density fluid layer is Za1. <coughs> and height of the top layer is Za2, Zb. This is the Zb. At top of the layer, you have a vent. So, you have a vent. Hai. So this is the one output where you can take the fluid. So oil will come here, oil will come from the, this is the one output here you can take the B fluid which is the oil and at the bottom you have the another output. Ek bottom mein output hai. Okay. Now this output will move like this. Okay, so there is a design in the pipeline. It comes from the bottom, then there is an elevation. So suppose this elevation is ZA2. So there is an elevation of the output point which is at the bottom of the tank. And at the bottom of the pipeline, there uh, you have an elevation there. So this is the, suppose this elevation is ZA2. Okay. So why this elevation is required? If this elevation is not required, then what will happen? The fluid will come from here. Bottom se nikal jayega, hai na? because this tank is very huge. The, the, the size of the tank is very uh, huge in comparison, uh, comparison to peat flow rate. Hai na? So basically the separation occurs due to the hydrostatic equilibrium. Okay. Separation does not occur in inside that inside this large vessel. We assume that velocities of the fluid is negligible. Hai na? In comparison to the peat flow rate. The size of the tank is so huge that you can assume that velocity is negligible. So you can just uh, simply calculate the the separate uh, simply calculate the uh, interface of the two fluids by using the uh, hydrostatic equilibrium equation. Okay, so that I'm 
then I will tell you how to calculate the hydrostatic equilibrium equation. Okay, so, so first I will write all the parameters. Let the density of heavy fluid, the density of heavy fluid is rho A and the liquid the and the lighter liquid and the lighter fluid is rho b okay the depth of layer the depth of the fluid of the fluid a is z a1 and the height of fluid b about the fluid a about the fluid a is z b so basically what i am writing that this height is z a1 and this height is z b okay there are two fluids the one the, the height of the one fluid is z a1 height of the second fluid is z b the density of this fluid is rho a the density of this fluid is rho b <coughs> the total depth of the well now the total depth of the liquid in the vessel is z t the total depth of the liquid in the vessel is z t so what is the z t basically z t is this total length here to here this is z t so z t equal to z a 1 plus z b so this is the height where you have the vent for taking the b uh, fluid b out that is that has the elevation of z t okay So Z T which is which is fixed by the position of overflow line by the position of our overflow flow line for the light fluid okay so basically the light fluid the jet t height is at the point where you are you are taking the overflow fluid which is the lighter fluid and that comes from the b point okay now Heavy liquid discharge through an
heavy liquid is discharged through an overflow leg connected to the bottom of the of the tank okay so basically how the um, uh, heavy liquid discharge so this is the overflow this is also a overflow leg hai na to yahan bhi you are not pumping the fluid out of the tank it comes out as a overflow hai na तो जो हैवी लिक्विड जो लाइटर लिक्विड है ऊपर वाले पाइप से बाहर निकल रहा है जो हैवी लिक्विड है बॉटम में पाइप है दैट आल्सो हैज सम एलिवेशन जेड ए टू और यहां से जो लिक्विड बाहर निकल रहा है दैट इज द फ्लूड ए ओके दैट इज दैवियर फ्लूड ओके सो हियर यू हैव ए फीड विच यू आर विच फ्लूड इज एंटरिंग इन साइड ए वेरी लार्ज टैंक देन ड्यू टू द ओवरफ्लो फ्लूड इज कमिंग आउट फ्रॉम द टैंक सो दिस इज ए कंटिन्यूस सिस्टम ओके but inside the tank because the flow rates are very very low inside the tanks you can assume a hydrostatic condition where the fluid is present in the stationary condition okay the height of overflow leg is z a2 theek hai so what is the pressure at the bottom of the vessel so what is the pressure at the bottom of the vessel that that is equal to if you use the uh, uh, use the hydrostatic equilibrium you have to add the pressure due to this layer and pressure due to this layer okay so that at the bottom of the vessel you have the pressure z b rho b plus z a1 rho a okay so basically this height the difference between this point you will get the pressure at this point the difference between this point pressure difference you will get the pressure at that this point okay so z b rho b z a1 rho a rho a1 multiplied by d gravity and you know, from that is the equation multiply by g you will get the pressure at the bottom of the tank okay and that should be equal to that pressure should be equal to because here you have the fluid which is overflowing at from this point hai na to jo yahan jo pressure hoga is point pe that is responsible for this overflow hai na to whatever the fluid is removed coming out from this point that is coming out due to the so the pressure at this point should be equal to pressure at this point then only fluid will come out from this point as a overflow okay so that should be equal to 
सेट ए टू मल्टीप्लाई बाय रो ए मल्टीप्लाई बाय जी ओके नाउ दिस जी विल बी कैंसिल आउट so you will get zb rho b plus za1 rho a equal to za2 rho a okay now i am just rearranging this equation we want to solve this equation for za1 you know because we want to know what is the height of the interface inside the liquid okay so z a1 equal to if i am just rearranging this equation z a1 equal to z a2 because rho a rho a will be cancelled out minus z b rho b divided by rho a i have just rearranged this equation okay now we know that z t equal to z b plus z a1 so you can uh, write z b equal to z t minus z a1 this is equation number 1 this is equation number 2 now substitute the value of 2 in 1 now substitute the value of zb from equation 2 to 1 you will get z1 equal to z2 minus z3 minus z1 in bracket rho b by rho a okay now just again rearrange this equation because we want to calculate the value of za1 so za1 equal to za2 plus minus za3 rho b by rho a divide by 1 minus rho b divide by rho a okay so this is basically the simulation equation okay so what this equation tells you suppose in a given decanter you have a decanter in the in a given decanter you know the height of zt hai na aapke paas koi equipment hai hai na decanter continuous decanter hai so decanter mein you know the height of zt zt is known za2 will be known because it is given in the equation in the in the in the design of the equipment iski height kitni hai zt if you know the value of zt and za2 then and you want to separate a fluid we want to separate a mixture of fluids where the first component has the density rho a and second component has the density rho b then you can calculate the height of interface z a1 z a1 is the height of interface and what is the condition for separation that z a1 should be positive first thing second z a1 should be less than zt okay 
so if z1 is positive and z1 is lesser than zt then you will have the separation hai na agar aapke paas to do fluid hai if your z1 is less than uh, is positive as well as lesser than zt then only you will have the separation otherwise fluid will flow in the other direction hai na agar if it is greater than zt then what will happen from the top column also you will get the heavier fluid okay if it is greater than if z1 is greater than zt then from this point also you will get the fluid a at the bottom of course you will get the fluid a at the top also you will get the fluid a okay so from this equation you can check that your fluid can be your mixture can be separated out separated out by using the continuous decanter given continuous decanter or not okay so this is the equation for the continuous decanter aaya samajh mein derivation sir yes yeah. bolo sir ye jo bottom pe jo pressure hai aur jo elevated pe hai wo barabar honge ha because all the points are at the atmospheric pressure to ye jo hai na ye atmosphere mein fluid is not flowing due to the pressure difference fluid is flowing because of the overflow yahan fluid overflow ho raha hai hai na yahan par jo fluid hai that is the overflow hai hai na so it is not coming out due to some pump it is just overflowing hai na so here because एक फ्लूड की डेंसिटी ज्यादा है तो नीचे से अगर आप पाइप को ऊपर ले जाओगे सो थोड़ा सा तो फ्लूड बाहर आएगा बिकॉज हियर इन साइड यू हैव द हाइट ऑफ जेड टी आउटसाइड यू हैव द हाइट ऑफ जेड ए टू है ना इन मोस्ट ऑफ द इन ऑल केसेस जेड ए टू इज लेसर देन जेड टी है ना तो यहां से भी फ्लूड ओवरफ्लो होगा यहां से भी फ्लूड ओवरफ्लो होगा एंड आउटसाइड द प्रेशर इज वन एटमोस्फेयर Okay, and based on this equation, you can calculate what is the interface point. Hey na? Suppose <coughs> if pressure, if the density of A is far far greater than density of B, hey na? A बहुत ज़्यादा dense है, B बहुत कम dense है. तो क्या होगा equation से? this value is rho b is rho is far far greater than rho b then z1 will become equal to z2 so z1 z2 equal ho jayenge hai na because this quantity will become the negligible okay and this quantity also become the negligible okay and if z1 rho a and rho b equal is nearly equal अगर ये दोनों इक्वल हो जाएंगे देन दिस विल बिकम जीरो है ना वन माइनस वन बिकम जीरो एंड बेसिकली व्हाट विल हैपन यू हैव द द ऑल फ्लूड विल मूव फ्रॉम द बॉटम पॉइंट ओनली है ना ऊपर के पॉइंट से फ्लूड फ्लो ही नहीं कर पाएगा है ना सारा फ्लूड जो है नीचे के पॉइंट से फ्लो हो जाएगा है ना सो कंटिन्यूस डिकेंटर विल ओनली वर्क वेन यू हैव द फ्लूड विच हैज द विच आर इमिसिबल एंड विच हैज द डिफरेंट डेंसिटी जनरली when you have the oil water mixture hai na when the oil is is uh, recovered from the earth hai na from the oil wells hai na the crude oil so that crude oil contains some amount of water also hai na 20 30% water is also present in the crude oil so that water is separated out by using the continuous decanters hai na so they put the water in the continuous decanter and they can separate it out the oil and water okay so this is basic application of the continuous decanter एक बार डेरिवेशन और पढ़ो आप लोग है ना आपको समझ में आ जाएगा बेसिक ठीक है आई थिंक दिस इज इनफ फॉर टू डेज क्लास दो वी हैव द हाफ एन आवर मोर बट आई थिंक दिस इज इनफ फॉर टू डेज क्लास दिस इज कंटिन्यू फ्रॉम द कंटिन्यूस डिकेंटर इन नेक्स्ट क्लास ठीक है कुछ पूछना है किसी को हाँ कुछ पूछना है आप लोग को समझ में आ रहा है चैप्टर फ्लूड मैकेनिक्स यस सर है ना
बुक से भी आप पढ़ सकते हो दिस ऑल डेरिवेशन आर फ्रॉम द मेकेप थिल मेकेप स्मिथ बुक है ना मेकेप स्मिथ में यूनिट ऑपरेशन बाय मेकेप स्मिथ है तो उसमें आपको मिल जाएगा डेरिवेशन पूरा ठीक है और अगर कुछ समझ में नहीं आ रहा है तो यू कैन राइट टू मी है ना तो आई विल एक्सप्लेन इन द नेक्स्ट क्लास एक्सक्यूज मी सर हां बोलो सर इंक्लाइन मैनोमीटर के यूजेस क्या क्या होंगे बेसिकली इफ यू हैव द प्रेशर ड्रॉप वेरी नेगलिजिबल प्रेशर ड्रॉप है ना अगर किसी देखो यूट्यूब मैनोमीटर आर यूज टू कैलकुलेट द प्रेशर ड्रॉप इन फ्लोइंग चैनल है ना फ्लोइंग चैनल में यूज्ड होता है सपोज यू हैव द प्रेशर यू इन द फ्लो चैनल द वेलोसिटीज आर वेरी लो एंड द प्रेशर ड्रॉप इज ऑल्सो वेरी लो है ना देन यू कैन नॉट यूज द यूट्यूब मैनोमीटर देन यू हैव टू यूज द इंक्लाइन मैनोमीटर मैनोमीटर का यूज सेम है आपको फ्लो मेजर करने के लिए आप प्रेशर ड्रॉप मेजर करो प्रेशर ड्रॉप से आप फ्लो कैलकुलेट कर सकते हो लेकिन उसकी एप्लीकेशन जो है ना अगर आपका फ्लोरेट बहुत ज्यादा है तो आप यूट्यूब मैनोमीटर यूज कर लो अगर फ्लोरेट बहुत कम है तो आप इंक्लाइन मैनोमीटर यूज कर लो ठीक है है ना क्योंकि जब फ्लोरेट कम होगा तो प्रेशर ड्रॉप भी कम होगा है ना देन यू कैन यूज द इंक्लाइन मेनोमीटर ओके सर और कुछ पूछना है किसी को चलो ठीक है आज की क्लास खत्म करते हैं पर है ना तो वी विल मीट ऑन वेडनेसडे आई थिंक वेडनेसडे होगी ना तुम्हारी क्लास हो वी विल मीट ऑन वेडनेसडे ठीक है